Hey guys, um, back. So, download that uh, Windows Azure SDK, right? Okay, got that downloaded, went through it, told you to close Visual Studio just so that you have it installed and they can update the ASP.NET application of Visual Studio to work with Windows Azure SDK with proper DLLs. So after you install everything, I, it's going to show you this little web platform installer, which is what uh, Microsoft is using to sort of be their content delivery application. Um, if you want to work with Node.js, go ahead and add those things for Windows Azure PHP. Uh, Windows Azure PowerShell is probably a really great one to have too. Uh, you can create and C Sharp PowerShell wrappers that actually can control components of Windows Azure, which is great for you. So. There's some functionality of Windows Azure that you don't necessarily see, but you know is sort of available. Uh, you can you can work those into a C Sharp app so that you can actually do that. You can go through products, applications, blah, blah, blah. Completely awesome. All right, so let's get out of there. I got Visual Studio 2013 for web. I'm gonna show you how to do this real quick. Right click on this once you have it on your, uh, pinned to your taskbar. Right click on the app and then choose properties because a lot of people don't think about this. So you got your properties here. You want to run it as administrator because your your apps are everything that you're doing is going to be accessing different parts of your system. So you want to make sure that your your ID can actually access everything. Uh, so the Windows Defender thing doesn't click in. So click Advanced once you right click that right Advanced and then make sure this is check marked Run as administrator. I already checked it. All right, so click off here. We're gonna start this thing up. Uh, if you didn't install your SQL data tools, go ahead and install those. Might come actually standard with 2013 uh, for web, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and create a database. Now, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, let me pull this up, actually. Uh, why are we not going to uh, SQL Server Management Studio? And why aren't we creating scripts, right? So here's what you're probably looking at. Let me go ahead and say, you guys probably using this thing right here. Um, Management Studio has its ups and downs, has great things, but we're not going to use it for the designing process. I actually used to create all scripts for every table that I was going to create. And then I realized that it's probably, you know, it's, it's something that I don't necessarily need to do. Uh, so I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use, uh, we're going to use Visual Studio to do this, which is pretty awesome. Let's download, downsize that. All right, let's click new project. Under new project, after you've installed your Visual C Sharp settings, right? We're gonna click on, um, they have SQL Server, SQL Server data project, and then there's other project types too that you can go ahead and get offline. Click SQL Server, uh, SQL Server data project, and we're gonna call this data project, I'm just gonna call it blog. Dot, um, blog dot, let's just call it that. Uh, let's call this, SQL dot um, SQL, okay? Blog dot SQL, okay? Create directory for solution. It's gonna go ahead and do that. If you have TFS, you can add a source control, not necessary. All right, click that. It's gonna come up with some pretty amazing things that uh, Visual Studio 2013 has. Allows you to design your database, everything here, and then run it on the SQL database. So if you notice over here, Solution Explorer, we don't have anything yet, but we do have our blog.sql project inside of a solution, right? So we're gonna go ahead and right click on this. You can import a data tier application. So if we already had something in Azure, we already had a database created somewhere, we could just import everything that would pre-build our scripts out for us. Or we can go down, add, add a new item. Or if you go all the way down here, just click add a table, okay? So, and that's what's going to come up if you click add new and then you can choose under SQL Server. So we're going to try to get this out in, uh, in the next 10 minutes. So in a blog, um, we're going to have a blog table probably, right? I'm um, going to go ahead and click add that blog table. It's going to come up with the designer for us, right? And then you notice down below here, we have a T-SQL that's generated off the designer view up here. So um, I like to keep with not just calling it ID, but since this is the blog table, we're gonna call it blog ID, right? Um, and the reason why is because um, if we use nHibernate or Fluent API, um, it's gonna be looking for the actual name of that table with the ID appended, okay? So let's go ahead, clicked blog ID. Here shows this primary key, 
click properties, right click properties. And we're going to see that this primary key says unnamed, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then if you want to, um, let's view our properties. It's not showing up except way down here. So click on that. We got that right here. Make sure this one's highlighted. Come over here to your properties and you're going to go ahead and do computed column specification, right? No, we're going to do identity specification. Okay. Computed is more for like if we're doing a date or we're going to be computing something. Identity specification, we're going to go ahead and click true here. And then your identity increment is how much it's going to go up. So if you choose it by two, the number is going to go up by two, five up by five, one up by one. And your identity seed is going to be what it starts out as, right? One. And then what we're also going to do here is uh, we're just going to leave it as int. Um, I like using longs uh, for most of these, which is going to be a big int data type. It's going to be a long in C sharp. Okay. Um, so we have this set. Let's go ahead and save that out. Um, primary key, it's clustered, which is what you need. And you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. Okay. So we got blog ID. Um, going to go with, uh, what else do we want to do? Let's do just blog name real quick, okay? Uh, normally you put like an owner ID or something in there, description, create a date, blah, blah, blah. Let's go blog name. We're gonna do nvarcar, uh, and we're gonna do a 255 is plenty, 255. Uh, we're gonna allow an all. Um, we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna do a description of this blog, and we're gonna do an nvarcar, uh, max on there and we're gonna go ahead and go with a um, created daytime created DT and that's gonna be a daytime type right and then we're gonna go to um, created daytime and then we're gonna go to active okay so these that'll provide us a little soft delete so if we don't want to actually get rid of it out of our database we can just check it off as being false all right so allow and all Blah, 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 blog ID, blog ID, blog ID, blog ID, okay. We could add an owner ID in here, so we have the owner who that's going to, notify system, blah, 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 active. All right, we're good to go on this one, right? Um, then what we're going to go ahead and do is we have this blog.sql. I'm going to create another one real quick. Let's create a, a new item or table, and we're going to call this... Uh, comment okay you want to make sure those are singular your table names are singular you know you're gonna have a ton of comments in there if if don't do comments table um make sure it's comment okay comment id um we're gonna go ahead and not allow that to be null we're gonna come over here identity specification we're gonna choose this to be true and identity seed one identity net one that's good okay comment id then we're going to be able to say on our comments, what do we want that to look like? Uh, so that'll be like our posts underneath that, right? I'm going to do a comment, um, the name of the person, let's say. Um, even though normally, if we're going to do something like this, we're going to be create ownership, and then we're going to have persons, and then we're going to have what type of person and stuff. And var car, we're going to do 255. Um, doesn't take up that much space, all right? And var card name and description um, and this is whatever they're going to comment okay and then um, we're going to have created date time right and we're going to do uh, type date time and then we're going to do um, active bit right and then let's add something else, but I want to add it up there so it looks nice and pretty. So I'm going to go to the designer and actually write this out here. So I'm going to go ahead and say up there, I want this to be a blog ID because I'm going to go with foreign key, int, right? And then take a take a gander at this right here real quick. Um, see how I added it in here for me? It's pretty nice, right? So click right here. You got this blog ID, right click. And then we got our properties over here, right? And then we can go ahead and we could click on our keys. We can add new, unique key, no, 
foreign keys under here. How do you foreign key? So what we want to go ahead and do under this one is um, comment. Uh, let's double. Oh come on, proper days. Okay, general not for replication. Blah blah blah. Table and column specifications. Uh, and specify to which this goes to. So foreign key column uh, references. So we're gonna say uh, blog ID references the two table. Well, when it goes to, I call this a blog table, right? This is a blog table. And the two column is going to be blog ID. That's what it's going to reference. Okay. We good? Cool. Um, we're going to put in and we'll say null. Make sure you spell all that right. All right, guys. Cool. We got those two tables. Good, 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 good. Let's make our connection real quick and we're just going to go ahead and publish this to Azure. Yep. You're right. We did it. So let's go ahead and build this real quick. Um, it's pretty cool. Goes ahead, validate your project, goes through, builds it, comment, SQL, right? Blog ID, foreign key, um, and pretty awesome. All right. Um, and you can change your name, change your name to it if you want to do that. Comment and then to table. Let's go ahead and do this so that can make it look good. All right. There's some mispractice on here, but we're just going to do it best that we can for now. So you can go to debug, blah, blah, blah. You can go to right click on this thing. You can build it up again. All right. So now what we're going to do real quick, in a couple minutes, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, publish. All right. You're going to say, oh my God, I need target database connection. Edit. Okay. Server name. Now, if you remember, uh, we're going to go back over here, right? Have this up. I'm gonna on Windows Azure blog. I'm under blog, my database, under databases. Click show connection strings, right? And here is my server. There is TCP right here. 1433 three, doesn't really matter, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do this. We're gonna go ahead and uh, drop down here. It's gonna show me my local stuff. But then let's actually go to. Um, we're going to type in a server name, right? Uh, use SQL Server. This is going to be our name that we put when we were making our SQL Server. And then we're going to do password. Then we're going to enter um, loading database name. We're going to do that into the blog because that's what we created, right? You can test your connection. Test connection succeeded. Yes. You can do advanced settings on here if you want to. And um, what you're going to want to go ahead and look at is, and I'm not sure if they changed this. Let me check real quick. Um, latest implicit unbind type system, latest uh, version ID, asynchronous process, and current language, pooling true, encrypt, persist, just false, dash, data source, fall over, initial catalog. All right. Fail over. Fail over partner name file all right context connection we're good okay okay click that now what's beautiful about this look at this generate script it's going to create the publishing script that i need um project which specifies sql server as a target platform cannot be published to azure good all right let's right click this real quick get this taken care of right click good properties on your project um target platform change that to windows azure sql Save that up, exit, okay. We're gonna go to publish now, like we did before. I wanna get this published before the 15 minutes, please. Edit, all right, we're good. Let's do this real quick. SQL Azure. I've got like 30 seconds, guys. Come on. Okay, cool. Loading database. Uh -huh. ah. All right, we're gonna have to do this too. Generate script. I'm gonna fix that error. All right, I'm gonna show you the generated script and then we're gonna create a published profile in the next one. See you guys later. Bye.